Okay, so today we're starting pointers, and pointers are a data type that can store a memory location. And they have to be associated with a type. So here on line 6, we are creating an integer a. And here on line 7, I'm creating an integer pointer. Now the reason why I know it's a pointer is because it has this star here. Now there's a couple of different ways in which we can create pointers. Um, let me just kind of do that up here. We can actually create a pointer. First we have to specify the, the type, right? So either an int, pointer, or a double pointer. And that star represents that it's a pointer. And we can specify the variable here. And OK, so maybe let's call it dp double pointer. Uh, let's call this ip integer pointer. So that's the way you would actually declare the pointer. However, you can also declare it like this. You can go int star ip or you can, and you can go you know w w doing the double example a double dp okay so what's the difference well there is no difference between these two examples let's just stick with the int so that we have some consistency here so there's no there's no difference between these two the difference comes in when you want to declare more than one variable on a line. So here, let's say if I went, let's just stick to one letter. If I went, I want to create pointer P, and I also want to create Q and R. Well, now, um, this doesn't actually work. This is, this is an Q and R are not pointers at this point. Because it'll be clear here if I go comma star, let's see, if I just go P here and I go Q and I go star R, then that's okay. This is correct. Every so P, Q, and R are all pointers here. So you know, you might think, okay, well, this syntax seems to be superior. It's a per point of perspective. Because if we wanted to, we could not use this method. And we could simply just go like this. We could just go int star p, int star q, and int star r. So if you want to put the star on the int side, and that does have some type of a uh, logic to it in the sense that usually when you're looking at the variable, the variable is p. And if you want to know its data type, you look to the left and you see, aha, it's an int star, which says that's an integer pointer. Whereas with this one, you have to recognize that that star p means that it's an integer pointer. So you can either choose to do it like lines 7, 8, and 9, or line 10. Both are valid. And I need you to, to be able to recognize that both are valid ways to declare pointers. OK? Um, so here on line 15, I'm using the syntax method that I've used on line 10. All right, well, let's take a look now. What can we do with this pointer? What's its purpose? Well, its purpose here is first we'll initialize a, and we'll give it a value of 2. And then this special character, the ampersand here, what that stands for is it is read as the address of A. So what we're doing here is we are assigning the address of A 
to the eye pointer. So if I was to draw this for you uh, as a picture, let's say, then think of this image here as the, the memory of the computer. And now, on line 14, we have, I'm going to use, I, I'm going to use capitals here, but um, let's, okay, so we've got our IPTR, that's declared on line 15, and we have A. Now A is just an integer, and on line 18, you can see it here, on line 18 we're assigning a value of 2 to it. So there's a value of 2 there. But then on line 19, we say I pointer points to or is assigned the address of A. Now, the way we write that, draw that as a picture is we just do this. We'll draw an arrow from I pointer to A. However, I want you to know something. We don't know the actual address location yet because that was provided on line 14 when we declared A, the operating system provided us with the memory location of A. And I'm going to pretend that I know what it is and let's just pretend and let's say it's memory location 147. Okay? Then IPTR actually has 147 in its memory location. Now it's much longer than that. Obviously it's a 64-bit operating system. So there's going to be 64 bits, which means that if there's 8 bits per byte, that's going to be 8 bytes of memory. That's going to be much longer than this. But just for learning purposes, I've shortened it to a very short number. But I want you to know that this memory location is where A has the number, the integer 2 stored. Okay? And that's, a, that's what actually this gets set to. So later you'll see that when I go C out A, I'm going to get the 2. And then when I go C out IPTR, I'll get the memory location where that 2 is stored. Because that's what that is holding. Then, line 24, we, we see this star again. Now, this is really important because a lot of times students get confused. This star here is not the same star as this one. Although they look the same, they don't behave the same. This star on line 15, see that's, that's another, actually that's another reason why I prefer this syntax. Because in this syntax, the data type is on the left, whereas the variable is on the right. So the star is, you can kind of think of it as being associated with the int type. As I was saying, this star right here is actually called the dereferencing star. So the way I would read line 24 is I would say dereference IPTR. Now what does dereferencing mean? So what it means is to dereference a pointer means to, fo to follow this arrow and go to where it leads to. That means that when you go star the pointer you're actually referring to what is stored where it's pointing to. So essentially it's not so much to say what what is stored there, but you're referring to this memory location. Okay? So if I go dereference IPTR equals 6, in this case, since IPTR is pointing to A, which was set on line 19, it's as if I said A equals 6. Those, those two um, lines would be identical. So that's what I'm doing right here. So essentially, let's now run this program and I'll show you what the, what the uh, result is. So when I, oops, hold on a sec. 
Okay, I just had to comment this stuff out because I'm declaring variables, the same variables, uh, more than once. So I just commented this section out. So let's run it again here. And you'll notice that the first two that prints, and then this is the actual memory address of the pointer. And then the six, well, let's w see where that's coming from. Notice here, this is, where, this is where the six is coming from, down here. So when I actually print A, or when I go C out A, that's where the six is coming from. And this is the two, and this is the address of that IPTR is actually storing. So the cool thing here, right, is that now we can actually see where, so there's the memory location, that's where that integer is actually stored in RAM, in memory. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So taking this, uh, this concept uh, a step further, if I say int x, right, and let's say I assign it a value of 5, and now I say int pointer p, and I assign that the address of x. OK, so far so good. Now what does that look like? It looks like this. It looks like we have x, which stores 5, and we have p, which is now pointing to x. But now, if I did int star star t, now what is this? Well, this is actually a pointer as well. But think about what p is. p is an integer pointer. So notice the way I read that is I say that p is an integer pointer. Okay. Remember, this is not the dereferencing star. Line 25 is the dereferencing star. The, you don't dereference stuff when you construct them. So therefore, this line would be read, this is an integer pointer pointer. Therefore, t is going to point to, now watch this, if this is t, t can't point to x because that's an integer. It could point to an integer pointer, and the only integer pointer I have here is p. So therefore, I could say it's equal to the address of p. That would create this arrow here. And so now, if I wanted to access the 5 through the t, I could go c out star star. So that's a double D reference, T. And if I did that, I would, in fact, get the 5. Because when I do D reference, the first star d completes this arrow. The second one D references the second arrow. And I'd get the 5. So I could also, obviously, I could also just do, um, and that would work too. But I want you to understand how the pointer syntax is working here. OK, so let's test your uh, understanding of this. Let's see how well you understand the pointer syntax. Here is a program. And I want you to pause the video now and see if you can figure out what the output of this program would be. Now, this is not a real program. Obviously, I don't have int main. But just follow the logic and see if you can figure out what it should print. Pause the video now and try it. OK, so the way we would go through this is I'm going to write down my variables here. So I've got IP. That's a, that's a pointer. It's an integer pointer. Uh, so is JP. That's an integer pointer as well. Then I have I. Then I have uh, J. 
Line three, so these are these are ints, okay? These are int pointers. Line three says IP is equal to the address of I. That means there's an arrow pointing like this. Next thing, line four says I equals two. That means there's a two here. JP is equal to the address of J. There's the arrow. And then it says dereferencing JP, which means we follow the arrow, is equal to 3. That means there's a 3 here. Then it says I is equal to dereference IP. So when we dereference IP, we get 2. So it's equal to 2 plus J, which is 3. That means that's a 5. And then it says line 8, C out, dereference IP. So when we dereference this guy, we come over here and it's pointing to the 5. So our output is 5. Hope you got it right. Let's try another one. So this will be the last one for today. Let's try, um, I think I got a 2 here. Usually I would give you a suggestion. These should be done on paper because it's hard to keep track in your mind what's happening. I, I honestly don't know if I could do these without a piece of paper. I'm using the MyPaint program. Okay, so here's the next program. Uh, take out a sheet of paper and uh, pause the video now and see if you can figure out what the output is. Okay, here's the solution. For this one, we actually have a pointer pointer called P. So a, po a pointer, this guy is an int pointer pointer. And then we have S and R. And S and R are both uh, int pointers. And then we have uh, T and Q, which are ints. So line 6 says, um, S is equal to the address of T. That means there's a arrow going like that from S to T. S points to T. Line 7, it says dereference S and we assign that to 6. That means T is now 6. Line 8, P is equal to the address of R. That means there's an arrow going like that. And then line 9 r equals s now this one's really interesting how because both r and s are both pointers but line 9 says r equals s well what does s point to it points to t therefore if r is the same as s it also must point to t as well you see because they they store the same memory location then line 10 says Q equals dereference P twice, once, twice, that's 6, plus dereference R once, dereference R once, and you get to 6. So that means um, Q is now 12. Then line 11 says R equals the address of Q. That means we're reassigning what R points to, so this arrow is deleted, and now R points to Q. And finally, the last line, line 12, says dereference P twice. So once and twice, and the output, therefore, is 12, because that's what that memory location is storing, is the 12. Hope you were successful with that. And that's our introduction to pointers. Uh, we'll continue uh, on pointers next lesson.